Good morning, I guess, to everybody. Um, just want to kick off by expressing a, a few sentiments of, of gratitude. Um, it took a hell of a lot of work to get Fight Island together, many months uh, of planning and execution, and uh, we couldn't have done it without our partners of the Abu Dhabi government, uh, the DCT, Department of Cultural Tour Culture and Tourism, um, a fantastic team that we got to work with, uh, again, for many weeks leading into to this event. Uh, our partners on the broadcast side with Abu Dhabi Media and their product UFC Arabia, um, helping to bring MMA content, UFC content, all across the region, not just here in Abu Dhabi. Um, and I also want to say thanks to the several thousand people, the staff members here who worked within the safe zone. I'm not sure if it you know, gets recognized enough, but a lot of people made a lot of sacrifices to quarantine for many weeks, to rehearse how you know the charter airplane pickups were going to work and the testing procedures. Um, a hell of a lot of work went into it, and so I just wanted to say thanks um, to everybody. Uh, the bonuses tonight, uh, we've got several. Um, Aspinall, Shemaev, Craig, Verdum, and a couple of good Canadians in Bozer and Ronson. Each will receive 50000 I guess, so, you know, you, uh, you had... John. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, quite, quite a bit of nice things to kick off there. But how would, now that we've got this kind of first run in the books of Thought Island, I mean, what, how, how would the company sum up the experience, the whole, obviously, a big financial investment? I mean, is it a win? Is it, it, are there lessons? How would you sum it up? Yeah, I mean, absolutely a win. It was a great success. And I think if we look back at the Fight Island experience, I don't know, five years, ten years, we're going to look back and say this was one of the most important moments in the UFC's history. Um, in my view, this is one of the most progressive and ambitious endeavors that we've ever undertaken. Um, you know, you think about some of the other notable concepts like this that have flourished, like the Ultimate Fighter, Contender Series, you know, get, getting into certain regions uh, for the first time, like Russia, China, uh, our efforts on, in the performance institutes, not only in Las Vegas, but also in, in Shanghai, you know, this is going to be regarded in that tier of, you know, very progressive projects that I think are going to have a long-lasting effect, not only for our brand, but more importantly for our sport. And this really was, you know, a pretty important catalyst, I feel, that's going to help propel mixed martial arts in the region for many years to come. Um, so a great success all around. Um, I believe our partners at the DCT believe so as well. Uh, we've had lots of conversations with them, you know, heading into kind of a, a post-mortem. Uh, but overall, I think from Dana all the way to, uh, you know, our groups, everyone feels like this was a massive success. I know we're all excited to get home and see our families, but the question is, when are we coming back? I mean, is it, can you point to another day? Because it, it does seem like, you know, Dana has said, look, this has got to keep happening for a while until the world changes again. So when do we come back? Yeah, it's a really important question, um, and a question without an answer at this point. I think everyone's aware, you know, we do need an opportunity to have some of the international athletes compete. Um, given the current state of coronavirus in, in the U.S. and many countries around the world, travel restrictions are not our friend. We're going to continue to look at opportunities around the world. Um, perhaps it makes sense to come back, um, but, you know, we're not sort of resting our laurels on this is the only opportunity. There has to be other opportunities for us. You need a very committed and willing partner. Um, you need a partner that is going to invest in the operational and the infrastructure to make it happen. Uh, as stringent and, and rigorous as the testing procedures are, don't, don't exist everywhere. And so we've got to make these decisions uh, very carefully as we look to other options. But, um, you know, we're, we're going to continue to look for other options in 2020. Um, it, it only makes sense because of the wealth of great talent that we've got all around the world. And can you give us an update domestically uh, with the Apex? Obviously, you know, as we were leaving, we were kind of seeing the headlines getting bad and that sort of thing, and maybe we're heading towards another shutdown, um, but you've got a big lineup of events coming in August. So yeah. where do we stand there? Is there any concern that there might be cancellations or moves or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, we've got nine events in August and eight in September when you think about the UFC pay-per-views, the fight nights, and contender series. Um, here's, here's the great thing about the last couple of months is, you know, we, we really feel like we've, we've blazed a trail, but we've learned a hell of a lot. So... You know, Jacksonville feels like years, you know, previous. It feels like years ago. And I think from Jacksonville to the first set of Apex events to now here in Abu Dhabi at Fight Island, we've learned a ton. And so what we're going to continue to do is improve the process. We're going to continue to prove, you know, the, the health and safety regulations, especially, especially with testing procedures, um, our operational framework, how many people work on the floor, what type of social distancing uh, rules are required. And we're going to improve it to the point where, you know, we can, you know, confidently say that we can be as safe 
in the apex in Las Vegas as we are here, because I'm a firm believer, I don't believe there's any place on earth that's as safe as where we are right now. Um, and there's no reason, given what we've been through in the last three weeks of Fight Island, that we can't replicate it to the same extent in Las Vegas. And last thing for me, kind of an interesting moment tonight during the broadcast, a very passionate Dan Hardy uh, was overheard, kind of going at Herb Dean a little yeah. bit. We saw some photos. Um, but just curious if you guys had any comment on that. I mean, obviously he was, you know, battling for fighters, but I don't know how appropriate it is to do on air. I don't know. Do you have any comments on that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so, you know, I wasn't on the floor when it happened. I was back in the office. I did hear um, some of the comments on, on the broadcast. He, he, here's the thing. You know, being a ref in MMA is one of the hardest roles that you can have. And Herb Dean is, is one of our best categorically. Um, you cannot, you know, bo bottom line is health and safety of the athletes is of paramount importance. On the other side, you got a guy like Cardi who, um, you know, very successful MMA career, an excellent um, analyst right now. But he's passionate, as you say, and, and he's fiery. So I think the important thing for us to do is try to get a handle and try to get an understanding of what actually happened. Um, obviously, this is not something that you address with either one of the parties during the show. These guys have a job to do, and so we certainly don't want to disrupt um, their efforts to do a, an excellent job, as we expect they always will. So we'll go back, we'll check it out, um, try to get a better understanding of, of what happened, and, and really sort of take it from there. But, you know, I guess the bottom line is there's one group of people that are able to talk to officials during a fight night, and that's Ratner's regulatory group and no one else. So we'll, um, we'll see what, what happens next week when we get back to the office. Yeah. Just a quick one for me. Hey. You mentioned you were looking at other possible international uh, places to go this year, in fact. Why would you go away from Abu Dhabi with what they've already got set up? Is that in pursuit of crowds or just because of locations? Of no, places? I mean, I think there's a few things. I mean, you know, an effective partnership has to have two groups that are, are committed. And, and, you know, there's still a lot of work that, be, that needs to be done. And so this isn't, you know, a commentary on how far along we are on the process. This is just, you know, there's a lot of of heavy lifting that needs to get done if we do want to replicate this. Um, you know, God, if we could do this several times a year, we would. This has been absolutely phenomenal and, and one of the best experiences any of us have ever had. I mean, you, we had people, you know, who were on the ground here communicating with people who were back in their home cities, you know, about to depart to come to Fight Island, talking about how excited they were, right? And so for an athlete or an official, or media members, or whoever you are, UFC staff, you were here. There was a there was a lot of work to do, but you know there was all, also a long list, a multitude of things to enjoy yourself with uh, here at Fight Island. Whether it was you know the golf, or the racing, or the bikes, or the beach, um, and so it was an, an incredible experience for everyone involved. Um, and so we'd absolutely love to come back at any point. Yes, sir. David, sorry, what are the um lessons do you think that you've learned from here that you could take to like you said to las vegas or maybe take somewhere else i mean if we're i think the big question is you know how do you effectively uh, operate and maintain um a bubble with integrity and i think that's probably the most important thing because you know if anything went sideways the whole thing crumbles but i think you know again the, the rigor and the intellect that was brought to not only the planning but the execution um, is the key driver in, in the overall success. No one was getting in and out, right? Uh, you know, I'm sure, I, I, I'm sure you guys were in double digits in terms of the number of tests that you've had in the last few weeks, pre-departure, arrival, end of quarantine or middle of quarantine, and then prior to every event. Um, those things take considerable financial investment. They take um, a considerable uh, quality in the team that's operating and seeing these through. Um, and I think the, the attention to that type or the adher adherence to that type of quality plan is, is what is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of the day, we want to produce the most amazing fights that our viewers can see all around the world. But events like this don't happen unless you've got full adherence to an operational health and safety plan that, you know, is not compromised at all. Given you've seen the, the provisions and the protocols that are in place, how far away are we from, from fans, do you think? Well, it depends on what type of, what, what geography you're talking about, what country you're talking about. Um, I've noticed, you know, in Europe, they're starting to have open air events to a small number of fans, a few thousand people here or there. For us, it all depends on the destination. Um, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, surmise what the outlook looks like in, in Las Vegas, but I do think it's probably a while in the U.S. Um, it's probably a while in Canada. It's probably a while in Australia and a lot of other places. 
Um, I'd have to ask our partners here how, how they feel about the, the opportunity. Um, but, you know, I, I think we've kind of, we've kind of looked at 2020 and said, okay, we need to adapt to the, the current environment and make sure that we can plan events to be able to broadcast to our fans all around the world and deliver live content to our broadcast partners and, and, and not have any tickets sold. So um, our number one priority right now is to deliver live events when the time is right and we're confident that the operational framework can work um, in whatever region we want to, 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 to go to, then that's when I think we make that decision. Would you feel that Abu Dhabi, would, as you said, everything's in place at the minute? Yeah, 100 percent, 100 percent. I mean, I think, you know, we got to learn not only about, you know, our our counterparts at the Department of Culture and Tourism, but a lot about, you know, some of the progressive um, investment that the government here in Abu Dhabi is making into um, into uh, health, into sports science, into AI and advanced data. And a lot of these things, you can see how they could work within the UFC world. And what we want to try to do, advancing the tools that our athletes have and creating the right conditions for our athletes to compete in. Um, so, I, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if our partnership continues, you know, for years to come outside of, this, you know, the original deal, which was the five events for five years. Thank you. All right. Anything else, guys? Um, you know, I didn't want to say it off the top, but I want to say it right now. And I appreciate, and we appreciate from, from Dana and Lawrence and the rest of the crew, you guys have made a lot of sacrifices as well to be here. A lot of time away from the families, um, great distances traveled. So we appreciate each and every one of you and, and how much time you've put into making Fight Island a success. So thanks a lot.